I'd like to call to order the May 14, 2018 meeting of the Highland Park Board of Education. The New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of the public bodies at which any business affecting their interest is discussed or acted upon. In compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act, the Highland Park Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting setting forth the time, date, and location to be submitted for publication to the Home News Tribune and Star Ledger and posted on the board's website at least 48 hours in advance of this meeting. Members of the public who wish to address the board will be given the opportunity to do so before the board adjourns for the evening. Linda, can we please have a roll call? Okay. <laughs> a little, little short. <laughs> Ms. Byer? Here. Ms. Simarusti? Here. Ms. Coleman? Ms. Gowan? Mr. Krieger? Here. Mr. Magaziner? Here. Ms. McFadden Di Nicola? Ms. Pietrobono? Here. Mr. Rizlevich? Here. Be it resolved, pursuant to the Sunshine Act and JSA 10-4-12 and 13, the Highland Park Board of Education will now meet in closed session to discuss HIV reports and discipline. These exemptions are permitted to be discussed in closed session in accordance with NJSA 10-4-13. Information regarding the board's closed session discussion will be disclosed to the public as soon as the need for confidentiality no longer exists. Can I get a motion to recess to executive session? So moved. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, can I get a motion to reconvene to public session? So moved. Can I get a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. All right. First thing we're going to do is stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. The flag is back here behind us in the corner. Okay, Linda, do we have any other communications other than what's on the agenda this evening? Um, no, there was uh, an email about someone asking you about times mm -hmm. of meetings, which I answered. I wish there was a way to make that more clear. It is, I think it's, I think we trip up a lot of folks with it saying that it's at 6 30 anyway. But, okay. Um, so then the next item in our, on our agenda is to pro approve the minutes from the public and regular public and exec executive sessions on May 7th, 2018, and the regular public and executive session um, as corrected from April 23rd, 2018. Um, can I get a motion to approve those? So moved. Can I get a second? Second. Is there any discussion? No? Uh, seeing none, Linda, could we have a roll call, please? Ms. Byer? Yes. Ms. Simarusti? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Ms. Gowan? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Magaziner? Yes. Ms. McFadden Nicola? Yes. Ms. Pietrobono? Mr. Mislevich? Yes. Okay, so that brings us to our student representative report. Hello, student. Okay, we don't have a report from Bart or the middle school tonight, so next we move to the high school. Uh, the high school is going into the second week and thankfully the last week of AP testing. So we started off today with biology and physics C. At, uh, we have calc, French, and AP language coming up this week. Junior prom is scheduled for this Thursday with over 120 students planning to attend. The Environmental Club's Green Challenge is starting this week and will run through next Friday. So the focus of this challenge is to increase sustainable transportation to school. 
Students are challenged to take a picture of themselves walking, biking, skateboarding, or riding the bus uh, each morning and submit it to the club, and every day one person will be awarded a $10 prize. Uh, our winner today was Katie Volpert, so congrats to Katie. The Central Jersey Model UN in Congress uh, 2018 is happening this Saturday. So Siege Monk is Highland Park's very own Model UN in Congress conference. It's staffed by HP students and alumni. The theme this year is youth movements, and we look forward to welcoming over 20 schools and 230 delegates to Highland Park to debate, compromise, and eat good food. Uh, we'd like to take this opportunity just to um, invite any of you, Dr. Taylor, uh, and the community as well, if they're interested in observing the conference, in uh, learning more about Model UN in Congress, or simply enjoying the international luncheon, which is served at 12 o'clock, uh, you're welcome to attend Siege Monk this Saturday. Uh, it runs from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., but you can also just come for the lunch, which is at 12. Um, so uh, we can make details about that uh, available, but I think it's um, a really impressive showing of what students at the high school are capable of. The spring track team attended GMCs this weekend. Uh, Julia Marks placed first in the 100-meter hurdles. Gabriela Sanchez placed first in the girls' long jump. Ethan Gildenberg placed first in the boys' two-mile race. And Joe Cranley placed second in the boys' mile. The girls' relay team placed fourth in the 4x100 four and fourth in the 4x400. Four um, the student-produced documentary, Black Doubt, received the best youth film at the Harlem Film Festival last Saturday. Congratulations to Mr. Hume and the students who collaborated on that project. And finally, the high school was ranked 17th in the state of New Jersey and first in the county by US News and World Reports, and was also ranked 109th in the country for STEM. So we're very proud of that. And that concludes the report. Thank you very much. Lots of exciting stuff going on. Uh, anybody have any questions for the students tonight? No. All right, we will move on to the superintendent's report then. I'm so excited. All these boys and girls are here, their families, and a lot of our teachers from Irving. Thank you. I'd like to introduce Miss McNally to the podium. who's going to talk about the special friends who are here this evening. Miss McNally, please. Well, good evening, everybody. I'm very excited to see all of your little faces here. It makes me very happy, and I know it's late, so I'll do this quick so you can get to bed, right? Um, good evening to Dr. Taylor, our Board of Education, and the students and families being recognized this evening. We're very excited to have you here. Um, here at Irving, as you know, we take great pride in offering our students a well-rounded experience in teaching and learning opportunities. Uh, the students I will be spotlighting tonight exemplify our mission here at the primary school to educate the whole child, not just in everyday subject areas, but in teaching kindness, gratitude, and how to be a friend which I believe all of you know how to do in a very, very good way. In fact, each morning, we end our morning announcements with Irving, be kind to each other and keep smiling, right? So the students being honored tonight, uh, you may come up with your families as your names are called. Sound good? All right. Um, first and foremost, we have Harsh. Naya, come on up with your family. Next up, let's see, we have Rosalie Hood, come on up. Oh. 
All right, and we do have two more names as well of students that unfortunately could not be here. Uh, Leandro Keeper Brown was one of them, um, and Xavier Precisen. And really quick before we move on, um, there are a couple of words about each of the children which I think all of you would love to hear. So, Miss Medine, come on up. Miss Couch, come on up. Good evening, everyone. So, I'm going to talk about my Rosalie. <laughs> Every time I see her, she's got that face that says, Hi, I'm here to learn. What do you have to teach me? But, oh, my goodness. So, in our class, Rosalie stands out in the spotlight. Apart from her wonderful academic skills, she's thoughtful and she's helpful to her classmates and her teachers. She loves to share what she knows and always has a genuine smile on her face. And she is the role model for our class. Everyone looks at her. From, and, and it happened the first day of school, which was amazing. The first day in kindergarten. And she's been like that ever since. I'm so honored and privileged to be her teacher. Thank you. I'm really honored and proud to have Harsh in my class. He has a sense of kindness and maturity well beyond his years. Um, my class is made up of lots of different children of all different abilities and ethnic backgrounds and it's just such a diverse form place. And oftentimes we'll say that was an amazing um, challenge or you did a great job, go get yourself a sticker from the sticker basket. And when Harsh picks out the sticker that he knows a child in my class would really like. In this particular case, it was Saturn. The other child was obsessed with Saturn. Harsh gave his sticker away and then just sat down. He didn't ask for another sticker. And when I said, Harsh, just go get yourself another sticker that was so kind, he said to me, oh, no, that's OK. I gave my sticker away. And I said, I know. That's why you're getting another <laughs> sticker. Um, and it just really stuck out to me because he didn't expect anything in return. And if that's all he takes out of kindergarten, I, I will be happy forever. So congratulations. Oh. Thank you, Ms. McNally. Oh, anything else? Oh, we have a balloon. Yes, we have a balloon for each of them. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> 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 So you need to tie those balloons up somewhere in your room and remember every time you look at them about tonight. Families, thanks for being there for them. We know it takes a village, a family to make it all work. Thank you. And thanks for being here. At this time, if you'd like to step out, you're more than welcome to. Won't be awkward. We expect it. Unless you'd like to stay. <laughs> it's completely up to you. Good night, everybody. Thanks so much. Thank you, teachers.
and that concludes my report. All right, wonderful. Those are our favorite kind of reports. I like that report. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have those reports yeah. all the time. Yeah. The best report. All right, so uh, I'll give everybody a couple minutes. Yeah. I'm going to remember that word for a smile. Yeah. Four minutes. <laughs> okay, so we will move on to our board committee reports. Uh, first, we have curriculum and instruction. Michelle, you want to give us that report? I would love to. So we have uh, item number one, resolution to approve the field trips. And if you had a chance to take a look at the field trips, you'll see some really fun stuff. Um, grounds for sculpture, a trip to um, the borough hall to learn how local government works, um, a safety ambassador recognition luncheon and um, uh, the Bartle trip uh, is to the high school I didn't I didn't get to ask about that but that looks that looks pretty cool they're walking over to the high school 120 students from Bartle oh boy is science stuff I would assume usually they go over the no, science for hmm oh is it the science fair yeah oh that would make sense I would think so right yeah. this would be like the time of year for no that. I just that didn't I don't have to do it this year, so it didn't click with me, but yeah, that, that must be it. It says May 31st. That makes yeah. sense, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's great. And um, so that's our first item. And then number two is a resolution to approve the HIV incident report for the month of March 2018. And there's three incidents on that report, and that concludes my curriculum and instruction portion. Land speed record, I believe. <laughs> Shortest uh, <laughs> curriculum. And you're welcome. Important. A long time. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Michelle right now? Okay. Uh, Mark, could you uh, go through the finance and facilities items for us, please? E yes, indeed. Thank you, Darcy. So um, this list is uh, much larger uh, since our workshop meeting. There's a lot of new items which Linda prepped us were coming. Uh, so uh, one through six are bill lists. So it includes the general bill list, athletic bill list, and cafeteria bill lists uh, going up as far as um, May 10th. Uh, that was one through five, excuse me. Uh, six is approval of travel and related expense reimbursements. Seven is the approval of the treasurer's report as of February 28th. Item eight is approval of the board secretary report um, which is uh, certifying uh, that of, as of uh, March 31st, no budgetary line item has been overextended. Um, item, item nine is the uh, certification of the monthly finance report and, and the statement that, no, that there's uh, funds available to meet our obligations for the rest of the year. Item 10 is approval of the budget transfers. Item 11 is approval of contractors for professional services. Uh, Bob Wyshynski will be doing proctoring of uh, AP testing. Um, Delta T Group will be working with the child study team. And uh, School Business Office LLC um, is, I'll, I'll say, on call in case of a potential long-term absence in the accounting office. Uh, item 12 are for two children that are in uh, uh, medical facilities and will require bedside instruction. 13, uh, we discussed or was in the minutes or, or in the agenda last, last time, is our renewal with Delta Dental for dental insurance. Uh, item 14 is a small increase in school lunch prices uh, of the order of Three percent. It's ten cents increase across the board in all of the schools from 285 to three, uh, two, uh, 285 to 295. Item 15 is a contract renewal with Pomptonian Food Service. Um, I believe from the notes Linda gave us that this is the final year of the contract with them, so we'll be going out to RFP next spring for the 2019-2020 school year for school lunches. Item 16 is renewal f for our payroll and personnel software system and budget expenditure system, including 
uh, carbonite off-site backup system for the next year. On item 17 is approval of the tuition rates. Um, this is based on our district's cost and in line with the uh, state guidelines. Uh, items 18 and 19 are acceptance of donated trees from the class of uh, 1968 and 1978 for maple trees in front of the high school and of course to replace the school trees that were diseased and needed to come down and now we have the nice owls there but we'll be putting trees up there as well. And then item 20, I think we're going to be tabling. Is, is that correct, Linda? Yeah, we're going to table that based on timelines. Uh, uh, we, we do have a report uh, um, from Linda and her committee making the, a, a recommendation um, for custodial grounds and management services, but we'll be bringing that on the agenda in June. And that is the finance report. Okay, thanks so much, Mark. Thank you. Um, just to clarify, number 20, I know we're tabling it, but uh, uh, Italian, that's still it's our current. Tempco. It's Tempco. It's the but same. They changed their name. They were bought. Clarify. I'm sorry. They right. were they were purchased. It's kind of like your uh, cable vision is now Altice. Right. So this is uh, Tempco is now, a, I can't even pronounce it, Italian Global Services. Uh, but it's the same company. Instead and we're of Italian, it's Italian. It's very strange. <laughs> but yes, it's the same company. Pardon me. Okay. And the other thing I wanted to clarify um, is I believe number 17, the approval of tuition rates, that's if we have students coming in district from yes. out of district. Yes. So if we have, say, a family in Edison who wants yes. their children to attend Highland Park Public Schools, these are the tuition rates that we would um, that we would charge. Right. And, it, 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 right. and a, a question I had asked is you notice some of the prices are going up and some are going down. Right. This is based on our costs, but the state might, uh, Linda was uh, telling me the state might supersede these numbers so that we might actually get uh, different amounts based on what the state finds a more uh, specific rate is. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Does anybody have any questions for Mark on the finance facility item? Rob, yeah. you look like you have a question. Uh, You're go, looking at me over your glasses. Going back to 17, uh, we don't have a rate for multiply disabled. I, I know we've had had rates in there before. Um, that's just because we don't have that program running right now, so there are no students okay, participating. So we just default to the state rate right then? Well, if we opened up a new um, multiply disabled program, oh, okay. so we, we just don't, uh, anyone who was in a program that was that is now in a program that's either learning, language learning disabled or autistic. Um, just because uh, that's the better uh, classification of program to serve students that are in the school district now. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay, if nobody has any other additional comment or questions from Mark, then we'll move on to personnel and communications. Judy? Sure. Okay. Um, so we do have some additions and corrections um, to the agenda. Um, and I just wanted to let everybody know that tomorrow, um, the personnel committee and the leadership team will be beginning um, the, the interviews, well, round two of the interviews for the assistant principal in the high school. So we're looking forward to um, participating in that and hopefully um, bringing a, um, a candidate to the board very soon. I just, uh, I, I also heard from uh, some of the students who are doing the interviews for the assistant principal. They were very impressed with a couple of the candidates. I mean, they also said a couple of the candidates were like, but I think that's kind of <laughs> typical in some yes. um, But they were really excited and impressed about, I don't know, I couldn't tell you who it was, but they expressed really positive feedback. So I thought that was great to hear. Oh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it tomorrow. Um, okay, so um, in number one, the uh, reduction of force, we have one additional elimination of a position, uh, assistant administrative secretary, uh, letter D. Um, I'm just going over the changes from last week. Um, uh, number three, the employment of non-tenured professional staff. We have an addition of Renee Dubral at Bartle with her salary listed. Um, we have a salary correction in the same category. Lisa Sanfilippo, the, um, let's see, she should be at step seven with a salary of 60,555. Um, so that's a change to that's what's That's a there. change, yes. And uh, we'll have a few more changes in item 14, but, so I'll let you know when I get there. 
Um, number five, employment of tenure 12 month office staff. We're adding Linda Moran at Irving with her salary listed. Um, number six, the employment of non tenure 12 month staff it now includes Angela Dawes at Bartle. We have number 13, um, the approval of employment of teacher associates, and um, the, none of them were on the agenda last week. It's actually, is that, yeah, that's under 14 on my agenda. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, number 14, we have a number of changes. Um, let's see. Jason. Jobity. She vote for yeah. Jason Jobity um, should be step one again at uh, 1476. Uh, Kyle Melanoski also should be step one. Nikita Rambreka, step one again. And Audra Zadotti should also be step one. And then um, Melissa. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, so all those amounts, uh, the, sal uh, the hourly rate is $14.17, I'm sorry, $14.76 rather than $14.85. Um, oh, okay, and Melissa Miel Vukovic, um, it should say um, two hours? Two hours rather than seven hours. Oh, yeah. Number 18 is the approval of the transfer of assistant principal. So we will be um, requesting that the transfer of Caitlin Brady from assistant principal middle school high school to full-time assistant pr principal at the middle school, effective July 1st. Um, we have a few resignations. 27, um, the resignation of Pat Patricia Allende, para at the high school, effective June 30th. Um, we have the resignation of the before and after school site manager at Bartle, Linda Moran. Uh, number 30, um, we have a non-renewal, employee 1105, effective June 30th. Um, and now we have some really exciting news. Um, so we have um, three new hires, um, which I will read, and then Scott wants four, actually. Scott would like to talk about them. The first person is um, the nurse at the middle school, and the, um, that is Kimberly Kershaw. And Scott, did you want to talk about her? So Ms. Kershaw has been with us for a full year. She served as a maternity replacement nurse uh, for a lot of Wallach, who was out. And she did a wonderful job for us. So she came out on top. We, we opened up um, interviews to anybody who wanted to apply. Uh, but one of the things that really stood out about Kim was the fact that she um, went above and beyond with our middle school students. We're, we're always looking for um, adults in our buildings to bond with kids and develop relationships. Kim surely did that. She got great reviews from a lot of our students. Um, has also been... Um, providing a lot of um, uh, health and nutrition information to our teachers and staff who have medical diagnoses. Ms. Kershaw came from, uh, she's a seasoned nurse, she came from a, uh, an out of district placement school, a private school. So she had a lot of experience working with some very challenging situations. So um, not to say that the, our middle school is easy, but she's definitely able to overcome challenges a little more efficiently that she may have if she had no experience. So we're lucky, we're lucky to have her. Great. Um, number 33 is we, uh, the approval of an orchestra teacher at the middle school, high school, um, Daniel Martinho. Is that, is how do you Actually, he's that? Uh, second generation Portuguese, yeah. so he goes as Martinho. Okay, thank you very much or for saving Martinho, me on that. Martinho, <laughs> um, He did um, beautifully in the interview process. He comes uh, highly regarded, and I'm going to let Scott fill you in on the details with that one also. Very excited about Dan. He's been Teacher of the Year every school district in which he's worked. Uh, he wants to be closer to home. He, he 
recently moved, so this will be a much nicer commute for him. He's currently the head of the New Jersey State Youth Orchestra. And if you Google him, you'll find he's also a, uh, a he developed his own string quartet. Yeah, I looked that up. Did you up. see that? Yes, I did. I was very, very cool. impressed. Yes. I forgot what it's called. Do you um, remember? I am blanking out, too. Ms. Radke's paying attention. Yeah, I think Now you are going to go Google. But anyway, he's violin, got a great Violin, viola, I think is our, are his instruments, but her, his specialty. Um, yeah, so he... <laughs> He still performs and teaches beautifully, and I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, we were uh, in the interview process. Uh, so after the first or s first round of interviews with a committee that usually includes students, our teacher candidates have to do a demonstration lesson, and then the one or two semifinalists are referred to my office. I had a chance to meet Dan, and we were chatting about a concert that he um, uh, produced a couple of nights before we met, and. Um, he was talking about the kids. They, they shoot him out of his uh, orchestra room um, because it was their last concert before the end of the year. Oh. <laughs> and they all took over the whiteboard and they splattered it with letters of love for Mr. Oh, Martino. <laughs> and I said, Dan, do you have a picture? And of course, he screenshot it and he showed it to me. And it was the most beautiful thing. I mean, he brings a real blend of the instrumental background that we need, specifically in the area of strings and a wonderful, wonderful rapport with kids. So we're blessed. Yes. Right. And the hard to find physics teacher. Yay! Cheers, cheers! Um, Noah Key Marks, uh, physics teacher, and he was recruited by our STEM supervisor, Dr. Nicosia. And Scott, take it away. We found him at TCNJ, where he did his master's work. He graduated towards the top of his class at Pitt. He did some research at Pitt, and it was all around the uh, area of equity, educational equity in the STEM fields. Um, I felt like I was a football, college football coach, recruiting and making sure my recruit stays with me. I emailed him, hey, just checking in, hope you're doing okay. He got glowing reviews from his uh, cooperating teacher um, and his supervising teacher. He just finished up his student teaching uh, and, um, and Ewing. In, which is close to TCNJ. So, wow. Um, and, he, also, oh, and, and the students were very impressed with his lesson plan. His yes, so lesson. Uh, ah, Mr. Lassiter told me his demo lesson was one of the best I have ever seen, and at least one student said it was the most engaged they had been all year. <laughs> anyway, Maybe we didn't there you go. <laughs> Okay, and last but not least, um, we have a special ed teacher um, for English, right, at the high school, um, Mr. James Tweed the Fourth. Another rock star. So I feel like the class of 2018, 2019 is going to be uh, ranked by rivals and Scout.com is like top ten or something. But yeah, seriously, Jim is. Well, let me just read a couple of things that uh, his uh, his peers wrote. I will be sad to see him go. Uh, his current district, Summit, tried to move him from the math and sciences field. He's a humanities guy, so that's where he wants to be. They tried to move him from math and sciences so they could keep him. The reason why he's able to be he's so flexible is because besides having a, a humanities background, social studies and English language arts, he's also a teacher of the handicap certified grandfather, so he's very flexible. We can have him teach oh, wow. okay. just about any, any subject, which is what Summit was using him for, any subject. Great rapport with the students. He's done a lot of coaching, so he may actually step up as an assistant coach because we need one for a couple of positions. So, uh, wow, he's great. And, well, wait till you see him. He's a very um, profound looking individual, so he definitely commands a, a room when he walks into a room. So we're very, we're very, very lucky. Actually, I shouldn't say luck. It's a combination of luck, but I think as much as it was aggression on our leadership team's part, our supervisors and our principals realized if you're going to get the cream of the crop, you got to get out there, you got to be aggressive, recruit, and then you got to jump on it right away. So these folks will be coming in tomorrow morning at about 5:30 a.m. after my run to sign contracts. <laughs> Not really. But we'll get him in tomorrow. Excellent. Okay. That's my happy news. Um, and then just some standard other things. Uh, 37, the approval of uh, summer band camp director, Mr. Coleman. Um, 
38, um, Spanish translator for 2018-19 school year, uh, Mr. Esteban. Um, number 39, approval of the volunteer team doctor for the 2018-19 school year, Dr. David Jacobs. Um, 40, approval of a Spanish translator for the child study team, Joseph Campos. Uh, 41, approval of the gender equity officer for 2018-19, Jennifer Knapp. Um, approval of ESL program officer, Susie Boudine. The 43, the safety specialist, uh, Caitlin Brady. And 44, appointment of chaperones for model Congress, Mr. Gold, uh, Lindsay Wilson, Raisa Soler. Um, 45 uh, chaperones for international competition DECA. They are all listed below. And the chaperones for um, Camp Mason Outdoor Center. And that's it. Okay, great. Anybody have any questions for Judy? Mm -hmm. No? Uh, yeah, I think it's number 18, the movement of Caitlin from the assistant for both schools to assistant for the middle school. I'm trying to understand the rationale for moving her from both schools to the middle school as opposed to the high school. Um, thought she was a better fit for the middle school. Uh, and we also asked her what she feels comfortable doing most. So it's a combination of her interests and ours, and we felt <coughs> middle school was a perfect fit. Uh, also, we have specific needs at the high school, and we're able to um, vet candidates through the process that continues tomorrow night who will accommodate those needs. But part of it was her preference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. Anything else for Judy? Personnel? No. All right. Uh, Monique, do you have anything for us for Equity and Excellence? We will be meeting at the end of the month, so no updates yet. Okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, right over here. I thought I came up pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Sorry I'll be short. Sure out of order. It'll be as if I hadn't spoken. Um, 8330, student records. Uh, We've discussed it before. We're, um, I'm proposing that we adopt it now as revised. This is the policy um, in which we have omitted reference to collecting student data about the, lo the uh, place of birth of students. And that is in order to avoid potential risks to our students who might not have documentation of their status in the United States. You've seen this one a few times yes. before. I'm there's no questions. We're ready. Or, or <laughs> All right, and then we'll just pretend that I didn't go out of order, and I'm asking Monique now, um, which will bring us to public comment. So, if anyone would like to make public comment, now is the time that you would come up to the podium. Usually, to come up to the podium. Um, if you'd like to make public comment, you can just um, there's a should be a sheet taped right there, and hopefully a pen. No one stole it, and if you could write your name down for us. <laughs> and then state your name and uh, your address for the record for the uh, board secretary so she can record it. Hi, John? Yeah. Should be. Hi. Hi. Hello everyone, good evening. Uh, my name is Mark Icorn. Uh, I live at uh, 138 Amherst Street, uh, right around the corner. Um, probably a lot of people come up here to uh, complain. I'm actually here <laughs> to uh, sing some crazy. Once in a while. Um, so yeah, you know, so I have a, a three and a half year old son that's in the professional hey. education program. The closer you get to the mic, the better, just so okay, we sure. make sure everybody uh, can hear you at home. Too. So I have a, um, a three and a half year old son that is in the special education program. Um, probably never thought I would be sending my child, uh, I'll be honest, you know, to, uh, to the school here, you know, the elephant in the room, you know, I send my other kids to, uh, private schools in the area, uh, but let alone also sending my ch a child at all to a special education program was never in my plan uh, to begin with. Um, we've been living here in Highland Park for about six years, and you know, after going through the whole um, uh, early intervention program, you know, it was time to figure out what to do with uh, schooling uh, for our son, and we met with the IEP team here. So right away I hear the word IEP. What do we do? We look online, we do research. Oh my God, it's going to be horrible. It's, you know, I hear people getting lawsuits and lawyers and, and people coming out of the room crying. I have to say, coming here, it was nothing short of an amazing experience. I would almost tell everyone to move to Highland Park if they have a special need <laughs> child, but I don't want to do that. <laughs> um, you know, I, I know that. Every special education child has a, a tremendous burden on 
um, budgets, taxes, everything else that goes along with it. Um, I, I've seen some of the online presentations uh, did more than anticipated, and, and that has a tremendous impact on uh, what we're able to do, and you know the budget that's available. And, okay, what do we do now? What do we do next year? So I realized that there are a lot of this difficult decisions are made. Um, we've been nothing short of happy with the program here. Uh, my son's in the Poops class, oh. uh, and it's it's been amazing. We've seen so much progress in him in the six months that he's here. Uh, that you know, I, I really wanted to come here to say thank you to the support to to Taylor uh, and to really everyone here for making it as best an experience as possible for us. Uh, we're really seeing the impact that it's having on our son, for our family, uh, and for that I thank you. So I really wanted to just come here and say thank you, and uh, we really appreciate everything as, as hard as it is to make it happen. Uh, for these kids, uh, just you know, appreciate it and thank you very much. Aww, yeah, thank, you. thank you. Can we? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm speechless. <laughs> Seriously, like just totally speechless. I, so appreciate you coming out and, and saying all that because you didn't have to at all. And that's so much validation, not just for Dr. Taylor or for the board, but for those teachers in that classroom, which we, uh, the finance committee, we went to see that, um, that particular classroom at the beginning of the year because we did, there were so many kids and we needed to expand it and we kind of wanted to see it for ourselves. And as soon as we walked in and saw all those amazing kids who we were like, yep, whatever they need, give whatever they need, give it whatever they need, get the teachers, get the, get the aides, get the everybody. So it's, it's really wonderful and heartwarming and like a little uh, <laughs> like this to, to hear um, the other side of that, that it's, um, that it's working out well. And we couldn't be happier. Thanks so much. Thanks for coming. And what a wonderful teacher Ms. Boop is. My child was at Irving where she was uh, para, I think, still, and just, just a warm, I can't speak to her skills as a special ed teacher, but I know what a warm, wonderful person she was, and obviously devoted to the district, you know, really stuck it out with us as a para um, until something opened up for her. So, thank you. Thanks very much. Okay, so if there isn't any other public comment, I would not want to follow that at all, even if you had it. Be like, nope, I'm sitting here, I'm good. Nope, you nothing, can't. Nope. Nothing to say. Um, okay, then we will move on to our board action items. Michelle, could you move the curriculum and instruction items for us? I would love to. I would like to move items one and two, please. Okay, is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Nope. Seeing none, Linda, could we please have a roll call? Ms. Byer? Yes. Ms. Simaresti? Yes. Ms. Coleman? Yes. Ms. Gowan? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Magaziner? Yes. Ms. McFadden Di Nicola? Yes. Ms. Pietrobono? Yes. Mr. Reslovich? Yes. Okay, uh, Mark, could you please move the finance and facilities items? Yes, I'd like to move items 1 through 19. Do I need to explicitly move 20, table, table, table 20? 20. And, and to, uh, I'd like to move as well to table item 20. Okay, is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? No. Okay, seeing none, Linda, could we please have a roll call? Ms. Byer? Yes. Ms. Simaresti? Yes. Ms. Gowan? Yes. Ms. Coleman? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Magaziner? Yes. Ms. McFadden Di Nicola? Yes. Ms. Pietrobono? Yes. Mr. Roslevich? Yes. All right, and Judy, could you please move the personnel and communications items? I'd like to move items 1 through 46 with the corrections. Okay, is there a second? Second. second. Okay, any discussion? No, seeing none, Linda, could we please have a roll call? Ms. Byer? Yes. Ms. Simaresti? Yes. Ms. Coleman? Yes. Ms. Gowan? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Magaziner? Yes for everything. Abstain from number 14, please. Um, is it, and what is your vote for 14? Abstain? Abstain. Okay, thank you. Ms. McFadden, Dina Cola? Yes. Ms. Pietrobono? Yes. Mr. Roslevich? Abstain on 33, yes on the remainder. Okay, uh, and Anne, you want to move the policy uh, item? Yes, I'd like to move, <coughs> excuse me, that we adopt 8330 as amended. Okay, and is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Ms. Byer? <laughs> yes. Ms. Simaresti? Yes. Ms. Coleman? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Oops. Yes. Ms. Gowan? Yes. 
Mr. Magaziner? Yes. Ms. McFadden Di Nicola? Yes. Ms. Pietrobono? Yes. Mr. Roslevich? Yes. Okay, uh, and uh, Monique, you don't have any equity and excellence items to move, so we will move on to the board liaison reports. Um, Scott, do we have anything from uh, Joshua Chen? Uh, nope, uh, next meeting is June 5th. Okay. Uh, Michelle, is the public information uh, committee or HPTV perked up at all? So I got a message from um, the Public Information Committee, which will be meeting June 11th. Michelle, how exciting. I know. <laughs> 3 p.m. Uh, on Monday, June 11th. And the agenda will include the website. This is the only information I have is the website and the role of the HP News going forward. So I believe there's going to be some sort of form. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see what happens, um, but it sounds like it will be a good discussion and I'll report in June. Okay, sounds great. Uh, Rob, I'm sure you have lots to tell us about the HPEF. Well, the HPEF uh, held its annual spring fundraiser on Saturday evening, um, honoring Denal Morgan, a uh, dancer and uh, a young lady who grew up in Highland Park and who, whose parents are um, uh, well-known members of long-standing in our community and Danelle is a wonderful young woman and uh, so the evening was to honor her for her for her work and it was very interesting conversation uh, with Danelle uh, talking about her her background coming up in Highland Park and learning how to advocate for herself as a, a person who was uh, reaching outside of the norm uh, to do something that wasn't really offered within the schools and she needed to go out uh, into New York and needed help. So she, she, I think she, she learned a lot of lessons and I think all of us learned about her and um, uh, so that was the first part of the evening. It was fascinating and fantastic and uh, later on, we had cookies and refreshments, and listened to Highland Park Swing, which w which is a, uh, an a would, would I call them senior? I would call them mature swing <laughs> band uh, members of the community who entertained. So it was a good evening. I think that it was a big success, and uh, I guess I'll be hearing more about that from from the group. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Rob. Um, and I'll just add that the board was happy to contribute to their uh, to their program with a with an ad that the, all the board members chipped in for. Eventually. Yes. Um, we're <laughs> extremely money with the yes. pestering yes. for Mr. Magaziner. Yeah. No, um, I, I, was that pestering that I was no. doing? No. 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 no, 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 no not at all. It was me. It was me. You have to pester us. I didn't have to pester. Us, no. Good um, it was good work on all parts, and actually, that program, I, I think that that program this year was probably the, uh, the best purchased uh, that I've ever seen. We did a, they did a great job, yeah. Fabulous. Yeah, and we're, you, you know, the board is very, very happy to support the HPEF, and so appreciative for all the work that they do and all of the, the funds that they, that they so generously give to the district for programs that we just can't fund, so. Thank you um, to Danelle for her yes, time. Yes, oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Um, yeah. And thanks to Bruce and Deb for having her. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and Bruce Jr., by the way, who doesn't get the he doesn't get the press, but he's a great kid. I, I understand. <laughs> I'm in that situation in my family too. My brother is the one who went back and got the you know the the, the Hall of Fame for my uh, my district, but couldn't be prouder of him. We love you too, Darcy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Um, so, Judy, anything first from the Commission for Universal Access? I do not have anything to report. Okay. Anything coming up? Do they have any meetings planned? <laughs> You're like, I don't know. <laughs> well, they've been conflicting with the school board meetings. So oh, really? Yeah. Sometimes well, it's a bummer when that happens. Yeah, like if they have to switch their night, but right. yeah. So okay, um, I, I'll follow up with it. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Uh, do we have anything nope, from the library from Ms. Fittipaldi? No. Okay. Um, shared services. I don't have, I've not heard anything about the shared service um, committee from the borough. Uh, Ruth, do you have anything for us from CPAC? No, I have not heard a thing. I don't think they've met. Huh, okay. That's unusual. They're usually... 
She was in Washington. Yeah, I think Kara's been really worse. Get your get your microphone over there. (laughs) (laughs) No, Monique was saying that she thinks Tara has been very busy, and then I I was remembering that she was in Washington advocating. Yes. Nice. All right, Um, Monique, do you have anything um, to report from Parents of Students of Color? I do. Um, They had a meeting on April 25th, um, and the first item of discussion on their meeting was actually addressed in last week's board meeting, but just I will briefly state that there were concerns about um, parents not really knowing what protocol they should follow if they're unhappy about uh, something that happens at their child's school, at a school level, or even a district level issue of concern. They discussed some situations in the past where they um, had concerns and they didn't know which administrator to really contact, whether it would be the assistant principal, principal, superintendent. Um, They were concerned about knowing the process too, uh, how it unfolds, how complaints that are addressed are then communicated to the larger school community um, for the benefit of other parents and students who may be impacted. Um, And I believe that Scott uh, addressed this issue in in depth at last week's meeting in his presentation during the new business portion. Um, So certainly parents who missed that presentation can view it on the video. And I believe we talked about posting this information on the website or in some kind of way making sure that this is very important what you shared and I think many parents would benefit from knowing the protocol. Um, So that was the first item of discussion. And the second piece we talked about were um, concerns about discipline incidents at Bartle and particularly how some of the students of color have been getting, getting written up due to minor discipline interactions, including horsing around um, and incident reports resulting in very harsh terminology such as um, assault, um, especially in instances where sometimes it's friends kind of engaging in horseplay. Um, and roughhousing, um, and I think overall parents are feeling concerned that there's a discontinuity um, between the implementation of restorative practice work um, and what's actually being felt on the ground in Bartle in many instances. So that was a concern that I believe has also been mentioned previously and um, I think will be an ongoing concern as long as we don't adequately address how incidents are being, uh, how children are being characterized in incident reports and the kind of language that's being used. Particularly for, again, students of color who, you know, often um, find themselves um, being labeled a certain way or described in terms that are um, harsh and can lead to larger consequences um, as they go through the school system. So that was really kind of a broader discussion that arose um, out of that concern. Uh, The last discussion item was about postgraduate resources for juniors and seniors at the high school. Obviously, postdoc members have created a database of postgraduate resources and programs, um, and they do plan to continually update that resource database for students who plan to go on to college or otherwise a training program or vocational school. Um, There are many good college prep programs that offer funding and other types of support for students who may be first generation students um, or students whose family may be low income, um, such as QuestBridge. There's fly-in programs, upward bound programs uh, that are going to be included in the database um, and other opportunities that parents and students um, of color often um, are not aware of but are out there for their benefit um, after graduation. There was also a discussion of planning a resource fair for high school juniors and other students who would be interested at the high school level. Um, All this is really great, these ideas and initiatives, but they did arise out of ongoing concerns about high school guidance counseling um, and specifically the lack of information and communication around resources um, at the postgraduate level. that many students of color and their parents have expressed concerns about the past. I know this issue has come up. Um, So while it's a great thing that POSOC is taking this initiative, I think it's something obviously that um, should be continually addressed in terms of making sure that students who may not have the kind of support at home or parents who um, are well connected or savvy enough to know how to, um, where to go for resources for their um, soon to be uh, graduating seniors, that they have that support in our um, guidance counselor system at the high school. Um, And I think that is it there. Yep, that was the last piece of discussion, uh, and I don't know when the next meeting is. I don't have that here. I'm sure that will be coming up shortly. All right. Um, 
Sorry. Thank you very much, Monique. Could I ask a question? Uh, yeah, follow sure. up on that? Um, so, well, is there a plan to sort of share the database, at least with the high school guidance counselors, and sort of, Scott, make sure that they're aware of the need for further uh, mm -hmm. information being provided to students, particularly students of color, perhaps, or students who are not uh, necessarily in families that are you know, familiar with the college application process and the other sort of postgraduate resource? So I, I met with the entire middle and high school counseling team about three weeks ago, and I tasked them to use some of the summer hours that we traditionally approve for them to use to do scheduling and whatnot to come up with a program that would push in starting in eighth grade to classes throughout the year that would just be intended to talk about the financial aid process, the college mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, visit process and whatnot. I also asked, uh, tasked I should say, the counselors to come up with a guidebook that we would hand every student. Um, we didn't decide when, probably sophomore year, junior year, to every student that explains all of these things. I, I mean, I, I, um, Definitely hear loud and clear HP postdocs concerns in that area. Mm -hmm. I, and, oh, I, I would just add to there, I don't think a plan is in place necessarily yet to share that database, but what we did talk about is possibly even collaborating on the resource fair with the high school because I mean you yeah. see high schools all over that will have their own you know resource fairs. I don't know when right. and if we've had one in the recent years, um, but. Certainly, that's something that I think postdoc parents would be willing to collaborate on and support um, the guidance counselors. If I again. tell you what, I could see, kind of light bulb went off. Um, the new assistant principal at the high school being integral to, yeah. to doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe even being a liaison who appears at the meetings. She's kind of patchy <laughs> and I can't divulge information no, about really the candidates, nice but I can say you. I think we. we you put well, the and in place and, then and Ruth out. and Judy will. See for yourself tomorrow night. That's great. The, the Somebody write that down. Make sure that gets in the job. Just take a write down. The other thing I wanted to add, because I have a junior and I also have a freshman in high school, um, is if we could please like include um, information on trade schools and other routes to, um, you know, advanced education. Because I know that we talk a lot about how to get student loans how to apply for college, yeah, that's and that's, that's really that. important. But I think that there is a trend in education, and if you read, um, there's an education writer who I follow named Anya Kamenetz. She talks a lot about um, different ways that people are progressing in their careers outside of the tra traditional four-year college. Many of us can't afford the four-year college, and we don't feel like we would you know, really sign on to a 17-year-old taking on $120,000 in student loans. So a lot of us that went through that four-year process are clueless about the other options that are out there. So if we could you know, just make sure that that's not lost and that we're not um, talking only about four-year Absolutely. Colleges. I mean, look, college is for, is for everyone. I mean, I don't, I'm never going to pressure my principals to pressure their students to apply to college. I mean, they are encouraged to un tap their potential. But college isn't for everybody. Right. And I think an important part of, in terms of the postdoc viewpoint and concerns, it was really about, yes, looking at giving kids information about all the options. However, there are so many resources out there for students of color, first generation students, low income students, that, I mean, this is basic stuff that a lot of students are not getting access to right. um, information about. So I think that was really the thrust of the conversation. That yeah. this, these are, there's so much out there that are like a fly-in program, a, you know, Upward Bound, Quest Bridge. Fly-in, so to pay, pay for people to go to interviews? To, but, to colleges, the prospective colleges that will fly them in for a weekend wonderful. or overnight. Um, yeah, there's um, Quest Bridge that will literally like pay a tuition. So, you know, these are things that for, for that, you know, who are, whatever student is interested in that track, um, knowing that that's an option is really important, I yeah. think. And that's kind of the concern that we had here, that that wasn't happening for many of the students um, who really did want to think about, you know, being college bound. Right. So. So how can we make sure that our guidance counselors, like, have that specific training, um, you know, that they sort of know like, oh, here's a student of color, you know, they might be eligible for a particular set of scholarships or a particular set of uh, supports. Is there like a, a way we can sort of make that actionable? I mean, 
have is there that's, guidance that's the plan. counselor PD? Yeah, is there PD for those guys? <laughs> Keep track of like what scholarships sure. are out there, what but, programs are yeah. out there, things like that. Well, again, I think the liaison between the organization and the school district directly, instead of be just appearing at meetings, having somebody in the trenches like an assistant principal could be golden in doing all of that. Oh, good. So we'll have them connect up with POSOC. That's great. Or with at least with POSOC's concerns. Good. Yeah, those are important. I just want to make sure this gets to the people like right. ASAP. Right. But it sounds like we're interviewing and... You know. Yeah. yeah. Can I follow up on another? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I uh, just uh, you mentioned Bartle and the concern at Bartle. I mean, it's something that we talk about a lot, and I know that we are the committee is coming up with uh, a new discipline, a proposed new disciplinary policy, which is fantastic. I haven't had a chance to look at it yet, but you mean discipline code. Or? Code. Sorry, not policy. Code. Code. Um, which I which I assume that would be something that applies to all the schools, right? It would be a district wide policy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's so, but it's specific for a Google oh, Doc. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. The Google Doc sets out by school. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, I did copy the board um, know, on I that, did. and of course you're welcome to give me input. I have been getting some from teachers around the district, uh, but eventually I'm going to bring that code of conduct to the full board for review. You don't vote on it, um, but right. I want your input. Um, so I, I, mean, I think one thing we've talked about is at Bartle, sort of what's going on, you know, restorative practices are coming in at the higher levels, at the, at the older uh, grades, and I, maybe it would be interesting for us to hear a presentation or something about sort of what the approach, what kind of approach is happening at Bartle, um, or maybe that will come in naturally as we, uh, as the district uh, sort of achieves consensus on a disciplinary code for maybe, the lower grades. Maybe Moni could share a little bit about your experience. You were involved, I think, working with the Bartle folks, oh, weren't you? Oh, I'm sorry. Right. So, but what we worked on in terms of the discipline code was really looking at, okay, what behaviors are going to fit into what sort of level or category of, mm -hmm. um, like, disciplinary action, right? So right. we looked at that piece and categorizing whether um, something would just be at the level of a classroom teacher sort of intervention and what then would need to go up into the administrator, the student, the principal getting involved, um, you know, and kind of leveling all of these sort of behavioral um, disciplinary actions. But the concerns that I hear from postdoc parents is really about the way that the incident reports are being written up and the, ver uh, the verbiage that's being described. I see. That that is I see. not really accounted for in the discipline code. It's a different issue. Correct, right? So the discipline code really is about what behaviors are we looking at as being possible violations of whatever, you know, this is our code. But then how we write up incidents and the kind of language, we, if, if a child hits another child, is that an assault? You know, what, you know, in, I think is that horseplay gone wrong or horseplay yeah, well, gone too far? I think far. in one instance, a parent relayed um, a situation where her student was... I think we have to get careful, like, getting too drilled down into specific incidents. No, I'm not. I'm yeah. just, just using a language term. So one of the terms was, um, I believe, um, criminal-like activity was used in an incident report hmm. or something to that effect. Does that sound familiar to you, Scott? Because I know you may have had some concerns um, shared with you as well. I think the concerns in large part related to the way things are reported to the state. No. Right, that's and reported to the, I mean, there was a difference I, between you know how what, they were reported. If you wouldn't mind, I'd like to, if I, this is an important conversation, but I'd rather have it in a small group so it's more manageable. Um, I, I, there's obviously there's concerns that I've been working with uh, Monique on as a representative of HP Postdoc, and I'm taking back to Bartle, and I'll continue to do that and work on those concerns. And then we can come back to the larger group just to make sure that we're clearly articulating well how these things are being right Address. reported yeah. and addressed. Right. Then, right? I yep. mean, that's Absolutely. kind of the goal. This, this, this seems like something that we sort of. I, I mean, I think you're talking about something slightly different than what I was referring to, but it does seem like sort of of a piece. The issue of what's going to happen with sort of disciplinary practices in the younger grades. Um, that I, I would, for one, like more information about that as we sort of arrive at um, a more coherent philosophy or. A, or perhaps we have, and I just don't know about it. No, I mean, I think this was a concern that Keith had brought to us the first time that you and I met with Keith as well, is, you know, we're restorative practices, middle school, high school, we're um, responsive classroom, thank you, at Irving, and kind of now at Bartle, but no. so now the job is to tie all these things together. Right, for sure. yeah. Okay. And figure out cool. how that's going to work. Good, good, that'll be good to know. Okay, 
Um, so if nobody else has anything else for Monique, we will move on to Anne. Do you have anything for us from Human Relations? I don't. I think I, report, I think I reported on our last meeting. Yes, I believe I did in May. Um, and then you reported on the last one. I actually, we have a meeting coming up on Wednesday. I'm out of town and I know everybody read my email seeking to uh, drum up some excitement for someone to go in my stead. Um, so if anybody does feel that, that sense of excitement, please let me know. I, um, Otherwise, I'll be getting the min minutes from Ashton and uh, relaying them to the board. Okay. It's this Wednesday at 7 o'clock. All right. Thanks, Ann. Sure. Uh, Mark, do you have anything for us from the Board of Health? Yes, I do. Uh, we met on uh, May 10th. Uh, we were joined by uh, Dr. Taylor, which was wonderful. Thank you, Scott. Really appreciate it. Of course, we've been talking for a year now. Uh, they, the Board of Health has stu two student representatives also. We've been talking a lot about the health and sex ed programs in the school, um, access to nurses uh, to, to, to talk about this, access to health, te health teaching. Um, and I can talk about it, but it really helps to have the superintendent there with slides to give a presentation. Um, and that's what Scott did. And I think uh, the presentation of coming from virtually no health and sex ed curriculum, which disappeared over the years, to what we have now, which is a lot of it in place, a lot of it going to, all of it going to be in place, um, and serious uh, study of a curriculum so that we can, can do the right thing uh, was really so helpful. I think people understood it. They could ask questions. Um, and it just was really a excellent. Um, as an aside, we also very briefly discussed uh, how the uh, later start at the high school is going, which has also been a concern to the uh, Board of Health. They, they had come uh, up with both, a, <clears throat> excuse me, a resolution to, to the Board of Education, but also a lot of studying on going to school, uh, having school start being later. And they really cared about how the, uh, the program was going. And so uh, Scott talked about that, and I, I think, uh, <coughs> excuse me, gave, gave the members of the Board of Health a very good understanding of what we're doing, why we're doing it the way we did, are doing it, how it's working out. We had students there talk about their own experiences with it, uh, and it was very helpful and very good, and it was a good meeting, and, and went on quite long. I mean, the, the Board of Education portion, the school portion was quite long and uh, significant. So we had a, a very good meeting, and again, thank you to uh, Dr. Taylor. Okay, great. Anybody have any questions for Mark? Uh, okay, uh, Rob, do you have anything for us for the green team? Green team, the uh, green team had a meeting today, and they were catching up mainly on where they were at with the New Jersey Sustainable School Certification application for next year. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and it was great to see so many uh, staff and teachers involved. Uh, I think there was at least 12 staff and teachers in the okay. meeting today. There's two student representatives from the high school who were actually very knowledgeable also. Uh, they do have a little bit of stuff for us moving forward, probably for the fall. Uh, some resolutions by the board that we would look at and enact upon if we can. But uh, we would, I would work with Melanie over that, with that over the summer, just to kind of hash those out and then we would start looking at them in the uh, fall. Sounds good. All right, thanks. Um, so next is me for the delegate to New Jersey School Boards. So this Saturday actually is the, uh, the delegate assembly. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't get a chance to get you guys the two resolutions. I just got my uh, little book the other day. They seem to be, I don't know, maybe it's me, but it seems like the whole timeline has been a little late this time around. Um, so there's two resolutions um, that they're going to be considering. Um, I already let you guys know that our resolution got kicked to the curb. Um, and it was really frustrating to see the language that they put in here about how that happened because it really does not. <laughs> it says that, um, uh, yeah, that it was just about the application and expansion process of charter schools, which is not what the concern was about at all. And as many times as I tried to express that that was not what the resolution was about, they just kind of stuck to that same line. And, you know, so what's done is done. Um, but the two resolutions that the delegates will be considering, one is on um, 
school violence. Um, so the, let's see, what board is it? Um, uh, Manchester Regional and Halidon Boards of Education, which are identical. I don't know what that means, but that's what it actually says. Um, their resolution says that the New Jersey School Boards Association believes that ensuring the safety of our students requires meaningful and uniform laws governing access to firearms, including stringent background checks throughout the nation, interagency collaboration to ensure the effective delivery of mental health services, and early intervention, strat intervention strategies, and state and federal financial support for security enhancements at the local school district level, which sounds completely reasonable to me. When they say early intervention, they don't mean like early childhood intervention, ages zero to three, right? They're talking about something early intervention in people. I think early intervention in terms of people who might health. have a yeah, yeah, yeah. firearms related mental health issue. No, I think just mental. It says mental health services and an early intervention strategies. So they're trying to tie that to the firearms issue, right? The, this is I think they're the trying to. Yeah. Firearms is a, right, okay. Yeah. yeah, right. So say we want better background checks. Fine. Um, mental health services and federal money for security enhancements. And unicorns. And yeah. unicorns. <laughs> Cupcakes. It, it is a little bit so of that fun. kind yeah, of feel-good <laughs> resolution. Right. Yeah. Hard to argue with, but not terribly actionable. Right. Um, and then the second resolution <laughs> that the delegates will be asked to vote on um, says the New Jersey School Boards Association believes that the school districts should receive state aid based on school funding formula on the school funding formula in current New Jersey statute we see how well that's gone so far without predetermined growth limits and calculated based on the most recent and available student population statistics again great idea but they can't even fund the formula as is so so these are the resolutions that they agreed to put on yes yeah good okay. ones that really don't like silly general any we like good whatsoever. things yeah that's good so. yeah. All right. so for some reason the phrase lipstick on a pig comes to mind <laughs> such is the delegate assembly Thank you for going. We have Thank you. some substantial oh, I know. ones through in the past, but this year is feeling particularly futile, I have to say. But I will go and represent, represent us nonetheless, because I think it's important. Um, so that's all I have for New Jersey School Boards. Rob, do you have anything for us from Middlesex County School Boards? No, it was two weeks ago, and I went to the meeting and discussed it last week as we were talking about school funding. And okay. Really no change there. We still don't know exactly what's going to happen. Nope. Not even close. All right, so we will move on to my president's report. Um, we put on the agenda our U.S. News and World Report 2018 Best High School Rankings, and our lovely <laughs> students stole yeah. my thunder. No, just kidding. Yay. <laughs> um, so just in case anybody missed the beginning, I'll just reiterate that uh, with the latest rankings, Highland Park High School ended up being... 397th in the country, 17th in the state, and then I think you said it was first in the county. Is that where yes. we ended up? Which is pretty amazing. And then being and 109th on. 109th for staff. Yes, and then, what, come on, I'm getting there. Oh, wow. <laughs> so being in, the, <laughs> being in the top 500 on that list then put us in the running to be on the STEM list and got us to 109 on the STEM list. So I think. Um, while I have to say, in general, I poo-poo these lists up, down, backwards, and sideways because, you know, they're really a, more a good marketing and real estate tool than, uh, than anything else. I think there is something to be said for a district like Highland Park making it onto these top 500 lists um, because very often the districts that you see um, populating the vast majority of the spots on these lists tend to be districts in much more affluent communities. They tend to be <laughs> magnet schools that are that have very strict enrollment criteria, um, or there are charter schools that um, just through ways of their lotteries and through counseling students out may start with a class of you know 200 kids, graduate a class of 50 kids, and then say we've got a 100% graduation rate. Except they already canceled out uh, three quarters of their of their graduating class. Very so clever. we don't have any of those advantages here in Highland Park. We are not an excessively affluent community. We're a very diverse community, um, and 
you know, warts and all, we are doing, um, you know, I think our teachers and our administrators are doing their best to work with every kid who walks through the door. So I think that in and of itself is, is worthy of, of noting and uh, stick it on the front page of the, the website and, um, and celebrating. So, um, and I think it also speaks to just the, the, the general trend um, that's going on, that we, with, even with this focus on equity, it's actually improving our standing. It's not taking away from our standing. And I think this is always a fear when we start talking about things like detracking and, um, and when it may seem like at the board table we're focusing a lot on um, not the higher achievers, but the kids who struggle more, that, the, that they we're going to lose the focus on the high achievers. The focus is already there. We're not trying to take any of the focus away from there. We're trying to move these kids up, not move these kids down. So to have us be a couple of years into this process and to have, um, to have this recognition come now feels very significant um, and something that I wanted to, to highlight. And I think it's also really nice that this particular, um, this particular, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, acknowledgement came at the same time that we had a lot of other positive things happening as well. You mentioned um, John Hume's film and the students' film that got recognition at the Harlem Film Festival. Like, what an amazing thing, you know? I mean, and that was this film where the students really took a look at this really ugly, ugly piece of, you know, Highland Park history and just put it right on out there, you know, like just dug something up, took a really close look at it and um, and put it out there for everybody. And I feel like that's a lot of what we're trying to do. We're trying to really look at <laughs> where the issues are and just address them um, as head on as we possibly can. And I fully expect that as we go through that process, as tricky and as painful as it's going to be from time to time and as many stumbles as we might have along the way, um, we're going to see that continue to improve. Um, so I'm really grateful for everybody sitting around here. I'm grateful for all the administrators at the you know central office level and at the building level, and you know, especially all the teachers who are there, you know, day in and day out with the kids, because this is going to take some real work on everybody's part, and it's going to be a really heavy lift to um, to do this work. But I think it's going to really pay off, you know, most significantly for and, for our kids. And Darcy and the students. We're willing, yeah. oh, willing yeah, to work absolutely. hard on the take take those AP courses uh, without being in a selective uh, STEM school or charter school, which many of the schools ahead of us in these yeah. studies, uh, uh, this this uh, report, uh, were selective schools. Um, but our students who are who are moving forward and taking honors classes, AP classes, and working hard is really meaningful, and and you know is really wonderful for the district and I think it pulls everyone up pulls the whole district up absolutely and the other thing that I want to highlight because I thought it was just another really nice thing that happened in the last week or so is you know last at our last meeting we finalized our budget which is you know a long arduous process and in the past has promoted all kinds of ill will in the community mm -hmm. and uh, you know it's been it's, sometimes it's been a very painful process um, since I became president of the board, um, we've started an annual tradition where we, um, with the help of Harry Glazer, who's um, uh, a member of the Orthodox community in town, he's gone out to um, different shuls and invited folks to come and meet with us. And we go out and have this, um, so this was, I think, the third year that we've yes. done it, um, uh, to meet specifically with the, the um, leaders in the Orthodox community and Harry was lovely this time. I mean, he's always lovely, but he was particularly lovely this time and he wrote up a little a little article about um, about this uh, collaboration between the board and the Orthodox community and got it published um, in a um, in a Jewish publication and uh, I think we put it up on the on the Facebook page and it's just it was just like another one of those moments where it's like we're getting there. I mean, and it's like you coming tonight. Like it was this we got so much acknowledgement around that table. We may not use the schools, but we support the public schools in Highland Park. And it, that's just this amazing, amazing mm -hmm. um, 
byproduct of that um, that open relationship that we've tried to foster because that's the only way it's going to work in a town like Highland Park is if everybody's on board whether we use those schools or not whether we use them for one kid or four kids or we're here for everybody we're here for all of the kids no matter what their needs are um, and we need everybody's buy-in so um, we're really really grateful to Harry and for that um, collaboration with him and um, for all the folks who are willing to come out and um, and hear our pitch on the budget and support um, and to support our public schools so so I can't wait till next year maybe this time next year we'll have the same we'll have the same report with uh, even higher rankings I'm like gosh what's happened to me I'm like pulling for rankings or something really wrong it's wrong. well the rankings I, I I don't know if this is true but I had heard that the rankings in that particular publication had changed you know the parameters where they used to use uh, strictly test scores, uh, standardized test scores. And they had changed you know, um, the way that they looked at it. Um, and that to me was really important because like, uh, similar to you, Darcy, I kind of felt like looking at test scores alone, it doesn't give you a really good picture. Um, so yeah, I, I have never really put much faith in you know, whatever kind of rankings, but I think that these are much more meaningful than they have been in the past. Right. Well, they've been challenged a lot. I mean, I think they've gotten a lot of very direct challenges on their methodology for how they rank and sort schools. So, so I think they've had to update that slightly. Maybe not quite enough yet, but still slightly. It's the right direction. Um, so, all right. I want to publicly recognize the board for being so focused on the area of equity. And you've taught me a lot in the last three years about how important it is. I didn't know this community as well as even I've lived here for 23 years as I do now that I've been here for three years as superintendent. And I know, I owe a lot of that to you guys for opening my eyes to, to what our real issues were. So for me, this was like validation that we're on the right path. Yep, agreed. Thank you. Well, thanks for going along with, for the ride. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate it. Um, so old business, you want to, uh, follow-up for I us do. about the Teen Center intake? So last week thing. I uh, shared with the board the process um, involved at the Teen Center at the Middle and High School in, uh, in intaking a student who's referred for services and then developing a treatment plan. And the board asked me four questions. And thank you, Elizabeth Asamoa and uh, Kim Holman for providing me the answers. So I'm just going to briefly reread the questions and I'll share the answers with you. So the first question that was asked had to do with confidentiality. Specifically, the question was, how is information kept about kids kept secure with the teen center? Um, and then I expanded on it to Elizabeth. I said, well, you know, the board is wondering how much, if anything, is shared about students with other parties. And Elizabeth got back to me to say that all counseling information is kept confidential unless the student or parent's guardian sign a release form to discuss the case with other parties. Students' files are kept in locked cabinets in each counselor's office. The files are stored in the teen center until after graduation when they are moved to a central storage space in the school. We keep them for seven years, which is a, a reg regulation. So that was the answer to the first question. The second question had to do with um, the extent to which we translate information in other languages about the teen center. We currently um, translate anything that goes out in Spanish. Um, food for thought, we should be likely doing it in Mandarin as well. Something around 20 to 25 percent <coughs> of our student population speaks that language. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll get the latest numbers soon, but. As of last year, I think it was 24%. Wow. Um, the third question had to do with working with students who either may be resistant or who have resistant parents or guardians to uh, receiving services. And um, what Elizabeth reported back is, Resistance in counseling is common among teens regardless of where they access the services. That's her perspective. Now, mind you, this is her third teen center, so she's been to two other schools. She's got some perspective. There are so many reasons why students resist, and we have put programs in place to address it. Um, 
The Teen Center staff is very diverse in terms of race and ethnicity, gender, religion, sexual orientation, professional experience, and background. The f I'm sorry, the fourth question speaks more specifically to the other question about um, resistance to services. You, the board asked if um, students can still receive services if a parent or guardian doesn't approve. And Elizabeth responded, we recognize that parental involvement in a child's treatment is very important under favorable circumstances, and obviously attempts are made to include parents. That said, a student under the age of 16 can receive a one-time counseling session without parental approval. After that, the counselor reaches out to the parents or guardians with the child's consent to explain services, the benefits of counseling uh, for their for the child's well-being, emotional well-being. Parents who decline consent are given a resource list of counseling providers in the community, um, but then teen center services are withdrawn. Now, in the case of children ages 16 and 17, the Keystone Law, which was passed in 2015, allows minors ages 16 and 17 to access mental health care without parental consent. However, Parental involvement is pursued if a student deems it beneficial to treatment. Otherwise, treatment is kept confidential from the parents or guardians as per the Keystone Law. Okay. Oh, I've asked Ms. Sesamo to come out to the board meeting in July to oh, program Excellent. Spotlight great. the Teen Center. Thank it's you. obviously interest for that. Yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you. Great. Okay. Uh, anybody have anything else for old business? No. Anybody have anything for new business? Nope. No. All right. Uh, any additional public comment? You guys? Okay. Uh, can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second. 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 Sorry. All in favor. Right away. <laughs> All in favor. Aye. 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 I was Good night, so everybody. I can't believe that.